So anyway, once you get a Linux machine going at all, then I have a couple of projects here where you just learn some essential commands. Here's Essential Linux where you just cover a few of the simple commands like ls and uh, how to find the help page and stuff. So this is for people that are not familiar with Linux command line at all. Linux Journey is a wonderful third-party website that has a whole bunch of lessons in Linux. <coughs> where it just has pages to read and questions. And so this is great for students who don't know Linux. It goes through the history and the basic commands and how to use package managers and all that stuff. Good information about Linux, um, used in a lot of my classes. And uh, here's yet another one, a big introductory Linux thing. So all these are just, if you don't know your Linux bash command line, do some of these to learn a few of the essential commands. And then you can get down to doing command injection. And this is where it starts to get fun. So the first vulnerability here is the um, image processing library vulnerability, uh, which I've forgotten the name of it somehow. But anyway, there's, this is a famous image processing library used on all the image magic. Image magic was used on essentially all Linux distributions, and it had a serious command injection vulnerability that was found maybe about six years ago. So um, we'll do that down here. But before that, here's the simplest one, just a ping form. So you can ping an IP address. You'll find this in like your router configuration page. Now on this, my machine, I blocked everything but the loopback. So the only address you can ping is the loopback, but that's all right. So you send pings and you see this. And if you look at what you've got here, this is the default bash command line ping output. So what you've got here is a sleazy programmer that did not figure out how to, it's a PHP program, but this programmer, which would be me, did not figure out how to actually send a ping from PHP. Did the sleazy thing people shouldn't do. Instead, just created a command line for the shell and then used the system command to execute it. This is how you end up with command injection. You take data from the user and include it in a string and then feed it to another system to interpret it as if it was typed in by the administrator. And so that means I can put a semicolon ls here and it will do that after the ping. So there's files here. You, so now you have command injection on the server. Now you're not the administrator. You could do semicolon who am I. And you're not root. What you are is www.data, the Apache user, because you're talking to a web page and you're coming in as the web page user. But you do have some privileges to do some things on the server. So if you know a few commands like ls and grep and cat and find, you can explore this server and find flags hidden on the server and they turn them in the scoreboard. So that's the simplest case of command injection, and that's why you need to know a few Linux command line commands to succeed here. So that's the first case of command injection. Here's the one I mentioned before, image magic. Let me get an image, like this one will do. Let me save that, whoops. My uh, browser, okay. Save image as, there we go. I'll put it on my desktop. And it's DC31, I'll call it ping. I don't know if it is a ping, but it doesn't really matter, I think. All right, so, all right let's see if I can process that image here. Um, so I choose a file, uh, all right, and then I upload the image. And this is gonna use the Image Magic Library, which was the standard for all kinds of image processing. And there it goes, it runs this convert command to convert it into a thumbnail. And it should be making a thumbnail here that we can see the full page image, but, oh, there it is. So there's a thumbnail version, and when you click it, it should go see the original size image, and this is something you find in every profile page on a social network and everything else. And so this is the Image Magic Library working as intended. Now the problem is, the people that made the Image Magic Library were sloppy coders just like me with that ping form, and they did something they should not have done. If you make a plain text file, there's one, I'm gonna just make another one. Okay, and in that text file, you put in this stuff here. Uh, let me go back to the right page. There. And you save it with a file extension that makes it look like an image file. So I'm just gonna save it and then we'll talk about it. On my desktop, this is gonna be exploit.jpg. All right, it's not an image, but it has a file extension to make it look like an image. And if I upload that file and process it as if it was an image, let's go to desktop, exploit, okay? And I upload that image, then it runs the convert command and then it prints hello and the date. So now let's look at what was in that file. 
But in this file, for some reason, the image magic people decided to make it possible to add text to your images to manipulate the images. You could have a block of color, and so you added a fill command, and you could even make the color dependent on a URL that it would fetch from the web for some reason. And they decided to implement this with this fill command, and whatever URL you put in here, it just puts that after a curl command in bash. So they wrote just like my ping form, started in PHP, and it did ping data from the user. This takes curl on data from the user. So it's the same flaw, but you have to have this boilerplate stuff around it and these punctuation marks around it. But the point is here, you can put any commands you want, like echo hello and date, and it will execute it on the server. So you could put like who am I and ls here. And unless you hit some kind of maximum length, which I don't know what it is, but I think we can get away with this much. So let's try uploading this one. The exploit.ping, exploit.jpg rather, and then upload image. And there we go. Now it, here's a list of files. And here's, um, looks like it did not run the who am I though. So maybe I hit some kind of limit. Is it there? I don't see it. All right, anyway. Oh, there it is. I put it first. Yeah, here's who am I, and here's the list of files. So again, you can execute commands on the server, and you can find flags on the server that way. And you'll have to use things like cat and stuff to see what's in those files. So that's another example. And there is a third one here of simple command injection to do, and that is Drupal Geddon. Drupal is a WordPress competitor, an open source content management system to make web pages, and it had three fatal SQL injection vulnerabilities called Drupal Geddon, Drupal Geddon 2, and Drupal Geddon 3. That would just mean anybody could do arbitrary commands on your Drupal server. So this is an old version of Drupal that's vulnerable. And um, I put it here. Now, I put it behind a name and password to stop automated attacks, which will keep trashing it within a few hours every time I put it up, because this is a well-known vulnerability, and there are bots crawling it. So the username is student1, and the password is student1. And that seems to be enough that it doesn't get trashed by anybody except my students. They trash it often enough. So, looks like it's still up there. We'll see if it works. For this one, you have to execute a Python script to exploit it. Um, and there's something in the uh, account registration process that had a SQL injection in one of the fields. So this goes to the user register form, and I think it's where you put in your email address or something. Again, there's a way to put in some punctuation marks and execute a command. So I should be able to run this right on my Mac in Python 3. Let me go here. Uh, let me just see if I have a good place to do this, like ED102. I do, all right. So um, I'll make this drew2.py. All right, so there's this program. Now, the thing about this program is you can run any command you want, and you can send output from that command, but you have to set it into a file, and you cannot change that file later. So you're going to have to keep changing the file name. So there's a file there. This your name dot text. I'm going to make this Sam DC 31A. There. And now I've got to change it three places. Uh, there and here. So if you're really cool, you can make a variable or something. But anyway, 31A. And down here, Sam, you have to choose a file name that no other student has used. And you have to keep changing it for every command you execute. So here it's going to execute this command, echo smiley face pipe T into that file. I'm going to put a smiley face in that file. And notice it doesn't use a greater than sign for output redirection because that's forbidden. And this is very common. When you're injecting, you're injecting into some field. And the field often has only characters, certain characters allowed, only a certain amount of length allowed. So you often have to be creative about writing commands that will survive the translation process. So this pipe T is the workaround for not having the ability to send up a greater than character. So if I did this right, that will create a file called samdc31a.txt. Let's see if that works. Python 3 drew 3 or drew 2. All right. And uh, oh, I, no module in requests. OK, so I have to do um, pip install install requests. Might have to do pip and 3 install requests. Let's see if this works. Right. OK, so it's going to be python minus m pip python 3 minus m pip. 
There we go. Okay, so it's downloading requests and putting it on my Mac. And the exact syntax of that command depends on which version you have. So now hopefully I can run this thing. It ran. So if it worked, it will have created this file and it will contain a smiley face. Let's see if it worked. It did work. There's my smiley face. Okay, so now I can modify that Python code to do things like ls and find and whatever else, and you can find flags on the server. So that's simple command injection in a few different situations. And I'm going to stop this video and answer that question there. Let me stop.